morning. And a warm welcome to all of you as we gather for worship from St. John's Episcopal Church in Johnson City. A warm welcome to all of you, uh, wherever you are uh, tuning in and chiming in from. Today on the first Sunday of Lent, we have a um, couple of special uh, aspects of our worship. Uh, we welcome especially all the children who are here and we will have a children's homily later in the service followed uh, by another brief meditation. And today also on this first Sunday of Lent, we celebrate Holy Communion. And I'm glad that many of you were able to um, pick up the consecrated bread and wine earlier in the week. Um, I invite uh, the parents who have children with them this morning to um, enter your children's names in the chat function and that way we can welcome them by name as well as uh, more, more, more broadly. I want to um, thank also those of you who were able to drop by with uh, items of warmth and uh, with food yesterday for the drive-by to collect items for our homeless neighbors and for the day center down the street who cares for them and um, helps them uh, survive uh, the cold and the, the difficult circumstances in which they live. Uh, this week coming up during the first Sunday of let we start a new Conversations in Compline series, Walking the Way of Love, that will be every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And it'll be a wonderful way to travel through Lent together and to prepare for Easter. Also, uh, this Wednesday at 1215 is our first uh, Stations of the Cross, which we will be walking outside as we're still under restrictions of pandemic time around the perimeter of the church. And um, you are invited to sign up for that online if you're able so that we can uh, know how many people will be coming. So thanks to those of you who were able to uh, negotiate that. Sign up and we'll be here for the first Stations of the Cross. And now as uh, as we prepare to worship on this first Sunday of Lent, I invite you to take a moment of quiet and center yourselves before the playing of the voluntary.
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other God before me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make yourself any idol. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not bear false witness. Amen, Lord, have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen, Lord, have mercy. A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, 
Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Reading from the Genesis of God's people. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will rem remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I've established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first book of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, 
the righteous or the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven, is at the right hand of God, the angels, authorities, powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven You are my Son, the Beloved, with you. I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. 
and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, again, I welcome all the children who are with us this morning, especially, and a special welcome to Laurel and Abram and Chance and Caitlin and all others. And I, um, I don't know how often the children have been at church um, during these, uh, this season of pandemic, but I wondered if any of the children or any of you uh, notice anything different about the way I'm dressed this morning or about the way the church is dressed this morning. Well, you may know the answer or still be wondering in your head, but what's different about the way I'm dressed is that I have on a purple stole this morning. Um, and our storyteller, Beth Wiley, is going to tell us a little bit about what begins today and why the color purple. Good morning. Our story today is about Lent and the mystery of Easter. Now you probably already know that for every season in our church, we have a color. I have on the wall of my godly play classroom, a circle of the church year calendar. And every year, the children and I move an arrow, actually every Sunday morning, we move an arrow from the marker from last Sunday to the marker for this Sunday. And sometimes we get to change colors. We have all been in the green Sundays of Epiphany, but this week is the first week in Lent. So we will change today to the color purple, just like you saw in Reverend Laura's stole. And that is where our story begins. Now is the time for the color purple. It is a time for preparing. Purple is the color of kings. We're preparing for the coming of a king. It is going and is coming again. We are preparing for the mystery of Easter. Now this is also a serious time. It takes many weeks to get ready to enter the mystery of Easter. So let's look inside this bag, see how many weeks it takes and what Lent makes when it's all put together. Mm. Look at this. I wonder what this is. Let's see what else we have. A second one. We have two. Maybe there are more. Let's look. There are more. Here is a third. They're all very different. I wonder what they could be. Let's see if we have any more. We do, we have a fourth one. One, two, three, four weeks, four weeks for Lent. That's as many as it, weeks as we have to get ready for the mystery of Christmas. Maybe that's all we need for Lent too. Let's see. Found another one, five, five weeks. Lent is, is longer than Advent. That's because 
the mystery of Easter is an even greater mystery than the mystery of Christmas. Maybe five is all we need. Mm, it feels like there might still be something in here. Let's see. Six, we have six weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks in Lent. Easter is a huge mystery. Lent helps us get ready. It's a time to get to know more about the one who is Easter. It is also a time to get to know more about ourselves and who we really are. These pieces are very purple. The one who is coming is very important, like a king. But purple can also be sad. Sometimes purple feels sad. I think this shade of purple is particularly sad. Maybe something sad is going to happen. I wonder what we can do with these. I wonder what they make. Let's see. Hmm. It's coming together. I'm sure you can see it. I see what they make. These weeks make the cross. A sad, serious cross. Jesus grew up to be a man and he died on the cross. That is very sad. But it is also wonderful. Watch what happens. Jesus died on the cross, but somehow he is still with us. And this is what makes Easter wonderful. Lent is sad, but Easter is the color of pure celebration. Easter takes everything and turns it inside out and upside down. The color of getting ready becomes the color of pure celebration. The sad seriousness joins with the happiness and makes joy. Look, we can't keep Easter in just one Sunday. It goes on for one, two, three, four, five, six Sundays, all the way to Pentecost. Now at this time in the lesson, we would wonder about the story. This morning, I'll just ask the wondering questions and we can think about them for a moment. And then maybe later today, you'll decide to wonder about them aloud amongst yourselves. I wonder if you have ever seen these colors before in our church. I wonder what happens when you see these colors. I wonder which part of Lent you like the best. I wonder which part of Lent is most important. I wonder who takes care of the colors. I wonder where the colors go when we don't see them. I wonder how sadness 
and happiness make joy. I wonder where joy really comes from. I wonder how we know when joy is here. And now I thank you all for entering the story with me this morning. Thank you, Beth, for the story and for showing us that Lent prepares us for the great mystery of Easter. We can't get to Easter without Lent, but if we walk all the way through Lent with Jesus to the cross, we will surely get to the joy and mystery of Easter and the resurrection on the other side. But today is the first Sunday of Lent, and we have a long way to go. And the journey of Lent always begins in a place called the wilderness. After his baptism, with the voice of God still ringing in his ears, the voice that called him beloved, the spirit that had landed on Jesus so, so gently, like a warm hand on his head, now drives him out into the wilderness, casts him out into the wilderness. And the wilderness to which Jesus was driven after his baptism is quite a harsh place. Massive brown hills cut by cliffs and deep gorges, sandy and windy and arid and lonely. No one lives there except jackals and bears and scorpions. And he was in this wilderness for 40 days, which is a long time to be in a lonely and dangerous and frightening place by oneself. And during those 40 days, we are told he was tempted by Satan and he was with the wild beasts and the angels minister to him. Other than that, we are not given much detail at all, just this vivid summary. He was tempted by Satan and the wild beasts were with him and the angels ministered to him. But even though we are not told too much, we know that something happened there and that something changed in Jesus because afterwards he was ready to go, ready to start the journey to the cross and all the way to the other side. The time is here, he said when he came out of the wilderness, change your hearts and believe the good news of God. There is a series of paintings called Christ in the Wilderness by an English painter, Stanley Spencer. And these paintings now hang, I think, in the Tate Museum in London. And Stanley Spencer originally planned to paint 40 panels, one for each day that Jesus spent in the wilderness imagining that long, lonely time for which we have such a sparse description. But in the paintings that do exist, we see uh, Jesus clambering and climbing into the ravines and rising from sleep and cavorting with foxes as they dart in and out of their holes and holding a scorpion in the open palms of his swollen hands 
and gazing at it with wonder and even tenderness. And perhaps it was that that long, lonely time prepared him for a ministry in which he had no home and nowhere to lay his head as he traveled about. And perhaps those days cavorting with the foxes prepared him to make other unexpected friends and to gather with outcasts and sinners and rejoice and play with them. And perhaps that day he held the scorpion in his swollen hands, prepared him to love his enemies and to withstand the nails of the cross with his tenderness and wonder intact. We don't know too much, but we know that in that long, lonely, and dangerous time, Jesus was somehow changed and it led him to a ministry of love more joyful than fear and stronger and more certain than death. And I am fascinated by change and how we change and what changes us and how our hearts are transformed. Repent, says Jesus, change your hearts and believe the good news of God's life. When my oldest son Joseph was born, he hardly cried at all. He just gave a tiny little gasp to start breathing and the nurses wiped him off and swaddled him up and placed him in his father's arms. And there he lay looking up into John's eyes, rapt and content. John immediately fell into a state of bliss. And we have a picture of that in our photo album. When my second child was born, he cried and wailed terribly, pitifully, inconsolably. He had been two weeks late and had been forced out into this wilderness and he much preferred the comfy place from which he had come. And there he lay crying and exposed and miserable. The nurses wiped him off and swaddled him up and he kept howling in distress. And they laid him in his father's arms and his dad immediately fell into a state of, we'll call it awe. And we have a picture of it in our album. A picture of a newborn infant in the arms of his father, but all you really see there in the center is a big gaping red mouth framed by swollen lips. And even in that small picture, you can see all the way down his throat to his tonsils. That day he was born, that first day, he felt alone and exposed and afraid. He did not yet know that he was being held and that he had been born into a house of love and that that would be his home. And who among us has not at some time or even much of the time felt so alone and exposed and afraid that we have only felt like crying. I have. And the spirit drove Jesus out to a long and lonely time and a vulnerable place. And he was tempted and he was with the wild beasts 
and the angels ministered to him. And the fundamental temptation is to despair that love is real or really for you or to imagine that you can run out of love like we've all heard you can run out of luck. And sometimes it takes a long time to learn and trust in any kind of wilderness to which we've been driven, that we're being held and sheltered by a body of love and that a house of love is our home and where we've been born to belong. But Jesus was not sent out without that voice ringing in his ears. I love you, son. And we are not sent out without a voice ringing in our ears. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you and for many. And this is love and food to sustain us in the wilderness, real as flesh and blood and will never run out. We've been living in a long and lonely and difficult time. Even if we've been crammed into one household with nowhere to go, or if we've been by ourselves, we've been living through a long and lonely time. And what have we learned about love in this wilderness? And how have we been changed? And how has this prepared us for the joy and mystery and good news of Easter? This Lent, we are preparing not only for the celebration of Easter and resurrection, but preparing for the ending of pandemic time and preparing for opening up the church and preparing to recover our flesh and blood life as a gathered body. And what have we learned in this time? There is nothing more precious than flesh and blood and being the body of Christ. And if we are, we will always be driven by the Spirit again into the wilderness of the world to be given and poured out for many. Praise be for Lent and to, for any wilderness to which we are sent that reveals the ways of life and love and lead us to the joy and mystery of Easter. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, 
light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord. For the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, for the peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and rec reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. We pray for all on our parish prayer list, Kitty, Shirley, Alice, Linda, Steve, John, Ray, David, Sophie, Tim, Mary Catherine, Evelyn, Ed and Charlene, Carolyn, Becky, Peg, Jennifer, Bob, Ebelie, Bill, Karen, Edith, and also for the repose of Gaines Johnson and the recovery of Sheila Johnson. We also remember and pray for Wade, for Amanda. We pray for those who have suffered and are suffering after the winter storms in Texas and elsewhere in the South. For the repose of the soul of Rick Carrington. We also pray for Courtney. We pray for parents and children. For those who died in the tornadoes in North Carolina this week. And for those living in countries that have no access to vaccines. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For those whom we have injured or offended, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. For grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of compassion, 
in your mercy, hear us. In communion with all those who have walked in the way of holiness, let us pray to the Father. Lord of compassion, in your mercy, hear us. We offer also this morning our prayers of Thanksgiving, and we give thanks especially for those who celebrate birthdays this week, for Sharon Hart, Elizabeth Deberly, Jeannie Blackwell, Mary Alice Fryer, Brandon Guffey, Beth Brading, Kathy Johnston, and Pearl Umi Nguago. Watch over these, your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen each when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their heart, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I invite you to add other prayers of thanksgiving at this time. O oh Lord our God, accept these fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We gather in Christ's name and share Christ's peace. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with peace, you, everyone. Lord. Peace. Peace. Service now continues with a celebration of Holy Communion on this first Sunday of Lent. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. I invite you to set your table at home for communion during the singing of the hymn.
difference is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son. He is the sacrifice for our sins, that we might live through him. If God loves us so much, we ought to love one another. If we live, love one another, God lives in us. Almighty God, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Body of Christ broken for you blood of Christ shed for you. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this holy sacrament, united us with Christ and one another, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all people. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Grant Almighty God that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust in your strength and grace so that they may rejoice forever in that protection of your loving providence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Beth and everyone. And I know I'll see some of you at coffee.